Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com. And what if I told you that Photoshop's user interface could make your paintings better? Not the brush tool, not the eraser tool, literally the interface. Before I explain how that works, let's do a quick quiz. The quiz is simple. I'm going to show you two colors and we're going to compare them. Here is the first color. What we have here is a light gray square. We'll call this A. Stare at this for a second and really memorize it. You got it? Okay, remember A. We'll cleanse the palette a little bit. And now here we have B. Dark gray, you might even call it a little bit on the cool side. Here we have a kind of a warm yellow background and this uh, cooler dark gray square. Cool, so we have A and B. Based on your memory, which one is darker, A or B? My guess is the obvious answer is B because this one is clearly the darker gray. The reality is that A and B are the same. This was a trick question and maybe some of you saw this coming. But even when I put them next to each other here, you can intellectually understand that they're the same gray, but your eyes are telling you something very different. Your eyes look at these and say, ah, B is darker, A is lighter. And the reason for that is because of the relative way that we see color. Color does not exist in a vacuum. It is only possible when you can compare it to other color surrounding it. We could think of this as a positive space rectangle and a negative space background. Well, you really can't tell what color the positive space is without comparing it to the negative space. And if you think that this exercise is cheating a little bit because I'm using color around gray squares, here I'll make the whole thing black and white, and you can see it's almost even more visible. They really just look like different grays, even though I know they're not. In fact, each one is 50% gray. And this matters when it comes to paintings. The reason it matters is because we have all this negative space around our image. We have maybe a dark divider within the canvas itself. Here I have one big image and I have this um, gray blocker on top. So this is giving me a relative contrast. We have what's called the background color, which you can change. Right now it's on light gray, but I can change it to black. That would give me a different impression of my image. And then we have the interface itself. For the sake of continuity, all of my videos on Control Paint have a very light interface. Well, this is actually not how I use it for all my paintings. Recently, I've been switching the color a lot more often. The way you do that is you go to Edit, Preferences, Interface, and you've just got these choices. So we can go a little darker or very dark. Aside from that, you can also change the background canvas. Here, I'll make this one, um, I'll make it dark gray. And then within the image, I could make this either darker or lighter. Currently, it's a 50% gray. But we can see if I were to just paint this, it would give a much different impression of my colors. These are our options. From a technical standpoint, we can make the surrounding color darker or lighter. The next question then becomes, when do we do it? Why would we do it? Well, one strategy would be to match the general tone of your image. If you have a very light image, you might want to have a sort of equivalently light background within Photoshop or on the canvas. On the other hand, if you have a really dark image, having a dark user interface might just make it a little easier to see details in your image. I find also that just the time of day changes things. If I'm working in the evening and my room is a little darker, I might switch to a dark interface. If I'm working in the middle of the day, sometimes the light interface is a little bit easier to see. But the fact is I do change the color of the interface and the color of the canvas more than you'd expect. And I encourage you to do the same. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.